so wait sige uh, actually Mr. Chairman wala naman akong tanong eh sige alala natin dalawang issue lang siguro to ay kaya na lang uh, Miss Rose no no Lynn Yes, Mr. Chair. Do you know a certain uh, Alvin Constantino? Yes, Mr. Chair. Uh, what is your relationship with uh, Alvin Constantino? Uh, he worked with me, Pa. As a uh, chief of staff? Yes, Pa. So, siya yung uh, COS mo when you run for congressional bid in Quezon City? No, Pa. Yes, and um, founder and leader of Confederate Sentinels of God? Yes, Mr. Chair. And uh, he also ran for councillor in District 6 in 2022. Yes, Mr. Chair. You know what, a certain Ted Lazaro? Yes, Mr. Chair. He's also your... Yes, Mr. Chair. ...employee? Okay. Yung bang pangalan ng asawa mo is uh, uh, Sean Wei... Sean Wei Lin or Lin... Sean Way. Uh, uh, alam mo, actually, gugulo ako eh. Anong pangalan Mr. talaga? Mr. Chair, yung last name po is Lin. Lin. Ang first name po niya is Wee Shong. Wee Shong. Yes po. Okay, so, uh, kanina sinasabi mo, hindi, hindi siya Alan Lim, correct? Yes po, Mr. Okay. Chair. So, uh, Wee Shong Lin. So, yes, ang tawag mo sa kanya pag nasa bahay is Wee Shong. May tawagan po kasi kami. So, hindi. I mean, pag tinatawag mo siya ng pangalan niya, anong tinatawag mo sa kanya? Wee o Shong? We shong po talaga. Ah, so ganun. So, kasi Pilipina, ta Pilipina tayo, di ba? Usually, kapag tayo, Pilipino, sometimes we tend to uh, call our husband or our wife, di ba, in a Pilipino name. Yeah, really, di ba? Kasi Pilipino tayo, eh. Alam mo, tawagan mong um, we shong. Uh, well, anyway, sa inyo yun. So, so, hindi siya talaga si Alan Lim. No problem. All right. So, yun ang nangyari dun sa 2002 ba yun? Yung sa Kabite. Hindi si ano yun, hindi si uh, uh, Wei Xiong Lin, hindi. Hindi po si Lin Wei Xiong po. Yeah, according to you, di ba? Hindi siya, okay. So, this, uh, pagdating naman po sa um, negosyo nyo, uh, kaya kayo nagkaroon ng uh, maraming maraming pera is because of the Pogo, correct? Mr. Chair, bago Asa pa po may Pogo, may, may pera na po ang asawa ko. Bago okay. ko po siya nakilala, may pera na po siya. Alright, so... Um, Meron siya nung Sean Way Technology. Sean Way Technology po. And one of these uh, Sean Way Technology is to uh, service provider, di ba? Nung mga Pogo. Master license po siya. Master license. Opo. So, can you kindly uh, uh, educate me on that uh, on that uh, on that field? Uh, Mr. Chair, ang involvement ko po sa Sean Way is again po sa back office po ako. Yung nag-aayos sa mga papers. Hindi, tinatanong ko, uh, no, no, tinatanong ko, yung, Sorry po. yung uh, Sean Way Technology. Yes. Siyempre, meron kayong 22, ano eh, di ba? You have so many, 32 um, name of licensee nyo under, under your, ano, Sean Way, I, I, I think, Sean Way Technology is one of those that was given yung mga subs licensee, correct? Tama po, Mr. Chair. At, uh, nagbibigay kayo yung service provider ng technology doon sa Pogo. Tama. Tama, Mr. Chair. Okay. And one of those that you have given your services is yung Oro On Incorporated sa Cagayan de Oro. Oro One po, Mr. Oro Chair. Oro One, yeah. Opo. And that is owned by Tony Young. Corporation po yun eh. Yes, so, pero Tony, Tony si Tony Young. Young Tony Young, maestrado. Babalik, pakikita namin dokumento kaso ang dami pa namin kakalkalin dito. But we know that uh, Tony Young owns etong uh, Oro One Incorporated sa Cagayan de Oro. Ito yung ni-read eh. Cagayan de Oro. Tama? Tama oh, yes. Okay. Pero I don't know po kung na-read po sila. Na-read sila. Nasa news. Hindi ka nagbabasa? I start po no. Oh, when was that? When yung na... Uh, yung sa Porak, when this was uh, raided by uh, PAOC TF and the DILG, were you aware of this uh, uh, raid in the, in, the, in the Pogo in Porak? Mr. Chair, nalaman ko lang po yun through news. Do you have an interest in the Pogo doon sa Porak? No, Mr. Chair. Are you sure? Yes, Mr. Chair. Were, were there a time that you have um, asked your COS, Alvin Constantino, 
na tulungan ka na ilabas yung mga gamit sa Porak? No, Mr. Chair. Wala was po there, kami business sa Porak Was po. there no communication between you no, and Mr. Alvin Chair. Constantino? No, Mr. Chair. That you are asking him to uh, find someone from the PNP to help you in order to release all your things, documents, and pertaining to uh, assets in the Porak, Pampanga? No, Mr. Chair. Are you sure? Yes, Mr. Chair. Oh, sige. I want to show you something. Can you show me a uh, figure one, please? Ayan. Alvin, sino pwedeng tawagan sa Porak last time na binigay mo? Okay naman. Pero this time, mga need namin kaming ilalabas. Hahanap po ako, ma'am. Then update ko po kayo. And that's Alvin Constantino. And magkano or kami na mag-uusap? Need ko ibang number pag papakausap mo ako. Paggawa kay Ted. Di ba you remember Ted and Alvin? Correct? Yes, Mr. Chair. Mr. Copy, Chair. ma'am. Wait. I'm not done yet. I'm I'll sorry, give you Mr. time. Chair. Okay. Punta tayo sa figure two. O, ito naman. Kausap mo. Ma'am, can I have additional funds for me to be able to be to file a case? Alvin, gamitin mo na lahat ng connections mo. Busy kami. Yung negosyo namin sa Palawan, kailangan namin gawa ng paraan. Yung sa Clark, yung pinunta natin, inaayos na rin namin kasi may tip na ayon sa ang next na pupuntahan. Just call me. Anong need? Magkaka, magkaka, magkasama naman tayo mamaya. Figure 3. Oh, you texted him. Uh, any update? Ma'am, hinihintay ko po yung regional director ng, ng uh, Region 3. Sige, asap. Si General Rodel Bura, paasap ng number sa Bible uh, para sa staff ko muna. Tatawag sa kanya. Copy, ma'am. Hanapin ko lang po. Contact number. Send ko sa iyo. And then lastly, Albi, may papalangalan ako sa iyong properties. But we need to talk with my lawyers. Lahat ng mga negosyo namin need matago yung ibang mga properties dahil mag-start ng mag ng asset sa Porak. May advance info naman tayo. May time naman ako para itago yon mga asset. Ipasok ko sa foundation yung iba. Yes, ma'am. Just tell me all the details later sa virtual meeting. You can use me and Ted for your properties. So, are you going to deny this? Ano? Of course, right? Mr. Chair, talagang ididinay ko po yan dahil wala pong katotohanan. So, ito ba? Ito yung ano mo? Yung, uh, yung uh, Facebook? Messenger. Mr. Chair, bigyan is ko that your, kayo. Is that your, your Facebook account, Messenger? Is yes. that yours? Yes or no? Yes, Mr. Chair. Oh, yes. But, Mr. Chair, let me speak po muna. Kasi may mm -hmm. one instance po na ginaya po yung Messenger ko. Ginamit ang pangalan ko. Yes po, that's true po. Nireklamo po namin sa Facebook. Nakita mo yung profile pic mo, Rose? Yes, Rose, Mr. Ayun, Chair. Rose, profile pic mo. And, 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 and all those in conversation with Alvin Constantino, that the same um, profile pic. Well, anyway, um, of course you will deny it, correct? Dahil hindi po totoo ayan, Mr. Okay, uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, will be uh, inviting over uh, Mr. Alvin Constantino and uh, Mr. Ted Lazaro in the next hearing and uh, for us to find out the uh, veracity of the uh, of all of this. Uh, well, allegation din naman to, ano? Rose, yes, uh, Mr. we Chair. have to find out the truthfulness ano? uh, of this uh, allegation as well. And um, how many licensee do you have? 35? No, Mr. Chair. One licensee and nine uh, sub uh, service provider. Meron kayo sa, Kagay sa Kagay May kanoon kayo sa Cagayan. Meron kayo sa Palawan. Meron kayo sa Clarkfield. Ka Palawan, we don't have po. Sa Mactan? Mactan, mayroon po before. Pasay? Pasay, mayroon po. Paranaque? Paranaque, yes po. Yes. Um... Mr. Chair? You, you have, uh, yes. Uh, thank you po. Mr. Chair, sakali po ba na mapatunayan ang ginamit po na messenger doon ay peke, maaari niyo po ba akong tulungan para ma-track po yon? Sure. Salamat Rose. po. No, no. Uh, don't worry. Uh, we will be fair, transparent, and uh, the very purpose of this uh, hearing is to really uh, find out the truth. Di naman po kami manggigisa ng tao dito kapag hindi po totoo. 
But of course, these documents that are being presented to us, the reason why we are trying to present is to present this is to have the validation. Hindi naman po namin kayo pinipin down. But if ever na mapatunayan natin na hindi na totoo, di mas maganda po para po sa atin lahat. Salamat, Mr. Chair. All right. Okay, so, uh, dito naman po, Mr. Chairman, no? Okay, uh, Okay, uh, kay uh, Commissioner uh, Paldon, uh, kanina pa si Commissioner Di uh, si uh, Ch Chairman. Uh, Commissioner. Commissioner, former Commissioner ng uh, Custom, sir, no? Yes, Mr. Chair. Okay, uh, sir, uh, kasi kanina, uh, si uh, Congressman uh, Luistro, we're asking uh, si Mr. Jimmy Guban about yung how it works doon sa, sa Custom. Uh, can you kindly uh, tell us, no? Kasi, uh, uh, basically, meron naman kaming konting uh, alam din, ano? Kapag nagdadak na po yung mga vessel. Kasi, Mr. Chairman, I, I really wanted to find out, no? Kung saan ang pinaghuhugutan ng mga custom, kung paano nakakapasok itong mga mga container na sinasabi ni Mr. Jimmy Guban and a lot of those uh, containers, eh, ang bilis nilang uh, naitatago. So, from the docking ng vessel, ikaw bilang commissioner, what transpired once na they, do that they dock? Sir, uh, Mr. Chair, unang una, uh, since 2017, five commissioners has already succeeded me. So the concept of operation, Mr. Jimmy Guban has stated, I am not sure if uh, that is still uh, the same concept of operation the five yeah, commissioners I, I, wait, has wait, succeeded wait, 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 me. Wait. Wait, Commissioner, ang binabanggit ko po ganito, once yung cargo, dumating na po yung vessel. Dumating yung ship, andun yung cargo. Di ba, parang aeroplano, pag may cargo ka, magbaba doon, di ba? Unang-unang papasok sa aeroplano, o kaya sa barko, syempre, yung ano, yung quarantine, di ba? Pasok yung quarantine, doctor, tingnan nila. Pag wala, pasok na kayo yung mga custom, uh, uh, yung mga immigration, uh, tapos yung mga custom inspector, uh, tapos, Tinitin na nila yung uh, mga sequencing ng mga kargong ilalabas. Kasi meron yung discharge eh, ng mga cargo. So what happened? Kasi dito po natin makikita eh, yung mga kargong ilalabas eh. Para makita natin, pag dadali sa warehouse, ano na nangyari? Doon nagkakaroon yung uh, maraming sinasabi ni Jimmy Guban eh. Na um, nagkakabayaran eh. Di ba? Nagkakaroon ng proteksyon doon sa paglalabas ng cargo from the ship papunta sa warehouse. Ang tanong ko, since na na yung costume sa loob ng barko, halimbawa, ilalabas, paano magkocommence yung operation on trying to get out all those cargos? Being the commissioner. Sir, yung uh, binabanggit niyang iba, uh, nadatnan ko na yun doon, yung, let's say, yung green lane. Uh, bago ka mapunta sa green lane, there's a vetting process. Ito yung sinasabi niya ang mga international uh, uh, cargos na ano sila yung napatunay na silang mga honest na traders sila yung nandun sa green lane kasi if you need to inspect every cargo magtatagal po yun magkakaroon po tayo ng congestion sa pier so ang ginagawa doon uh, ina-identify yung na-establish ng matitinong uh, uh, importers sila yung napupunta sa green lane may binanggit siyang red at saka meron siya yung binanggit na RMO, yung Risk Management Office, they're the ones managing the determination of, predetermination of these cargos to be flagged para buksan siya. Kasi you cannot open all the cargos. Eh. So yung napunta sa green lane, yun na yung hindi na bubuksan. Yung na, na flag ng Risk Management Office na red, ito yung mandatory na inspekin. Uh, yun po yung binabanggit niya kanina. And so, I think it's, it's a good practice. Ngayon yung binabanggit niya ang banded warehouse, ito po yung mga nag-apply. Ang nag-approve po nito is up to uh, the Secretary of Finance na ito yung mga dinadala yung imported raw materials. They process it dun sa banded warehouse and send it back abroad. Uh, ito yung mga walang tariff. I think there's a law that covers that. Usually, nasa PESA po yun, PESA zones. Yun yung sinasabi niyang bonded warehouses. Di ba, uh, Commissioner, meron niyang uh, tinatawag na manifestation, di ba? Kapag yung uh, master of the ship, dala-dala yung manifestation, sigurado tayo na kapag binigay yung manifestation doon sa uh, custom uh, inspector, 
alam kung ilan yung ilalabas. Alam kung ano yung bigat ng mga cargo. Am I correct? Uh, meron po talaga ang pre-shipment na documents. Mm. And ito yung uh, ginagawa nung trabaho ito ng mga brokers. And then, uh, ito yung, ito yung ini-inspect ng bawat port. Uh, we have, our, I think, 36 ports nationwide. So, may mga port collectors. Yan po yung primary job po nila uh, under the new customs law. So, the, the final authority to release every goods sa bawat port is, uh, that's, that's the, the role of the collectors. Pero yung sa manifesto, collectors. Lede, sir, sa manifesto, kasi yung manifesto yung uh, magpapatunay kung ano yung mga cargo eh. Diba? Ako, ako yung uh, ship, ano, um, master of the ship. Ako may control nito, pati nung stowage, stowage plan. Diba? Stowage plan. Uh, kung ilan yung uh, nakalagay ng mga cargo dyan. Alam ko yung weight niyan. Diba? Kung alam ko yung weight niyan, alam ko kung ano yung stowage plan, eto na yung manifesto. Ako yung may, ako yung may ship. Ibibigay ko na ngayon sa immigration, ano, uh, sa custom inspector. Diba? Ngayon, anong gagawin nila doon sa cargo inilabas sila? Are they going to uh, mag-ano uli sila? mag uli sila? Di ba dapat para makita mo kung may discrepancy? Di ba? Ginagawa ba ninyo yun sa custom during that time? Uh, again, sir, there, there's the fun that's the function of the RMO to predetermine kung ano yung ipaflag nila at inspeccion based on the manifest. Pa, 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 paano nag-predetermine? Based on the manifest and then paano mo iti-check kung talaga yun yung weight ng lahat ng laman ng kargong yan? Uh, mayroong weighing scale doon talaga para pag naka, napunta siya sa red, if you flag yan talaga, tapos i-inspect niya ng port. Pinapractice okay. yan? Uh, during my time, it's practice. Jimmy, Your pinapractice order. ba yan? Tayo para malaman natin, kasi mayroong ka allegation that 600 containers uh, have been uh, ano eh, nawala eh. Kaya uh, nagtataka ako, uh, bakit ganong kadami ang nawawala? Sino may problema dito? Your Honor, uh, uh, if I may, you know, from the start, yung sabi niyo pong barko, nandiyan ang mga containers, pagdating po ng barko sa port, halimbawa Port of Manila, may team po yan, uh, customs, then immigration, quarantine, uh, quarantine yan po muna ang papasok. Pero before the arrival of the diesel, Your Honor, there was already an advanced foreign manifest sa Bureau of Customs. So, malalaman mo na po kung yung parating na barko, kung ano ang laman, kargaminto. So, yun po yung legal declaration from the port of origin. So, unti-unti, ang tatrabaho na po ng mga container, kargaminto sa Bisel, ay yun naman po ang ICTSI, yung port operator. So, wala pa po doon, Your Honors, yung custom. Yeah. Dahil doon pa lang yun, iba pa po yung exam. So, pagkababa po ng container, Yung po papasok ang facilitator broker, magdi-declare sila ngayon from the foreign manifest, yung advance manifest, yung license broker or representative, magdi-declare po sila ng kargaminto nila base po doon sa advance foreign manifest from the shipping line. Okay. So, ang, si ang sinasabi mo yung mga uh, individual manifest, di ba? Yung foreign uh, manifest na yun, nakukuha na nila. So, alam nila ito na darating. Yes, sure. Okay. Pa Paano ang consolidated? Halimbawa, consolidated consignee uh, yung, ano, yung, um, yung uh, uh, container. Your Honor, do they have, ang talong ko sa'yo, do they have separate, separate na mga manifestation? Uh, Your Honor, yan po yung, iisa lang ang manifesto niyan galing sa port of origin. Halimbawa, isang consignee, ang nakalagay doon na container ay lima. In fact, minsan mayroon pa dahil may rider pa yan na isa or dalawa. So pagdating po doon, makikita po natin kung ilang containers sa isang consignee ang parating. At kung consolidated siya, doon na nagkakaroon ng palusot? Kung consolidated po, Your Honor, nakadeklara yun doon. Ngayon, pagdating po doon sa palusot, pagdating doon advance, nakapaila ng entry, ready na po yun, dire-direcho, with gate pass na yun, nakapalusot na. Ibig sabihin, wala nang opening ng containers, diretso na yung palabas lalo na pag ito ay trabaho, or nakatimbri sa lahat, kunyaring nawawala ang container, pero trabaho yun. So yan yung nangyari po sa maraming so, nawawala okay. ng container. Nakuha ko na. So in other words, Mr. Chairman, do natin nakikita yung may problema, most especially because Mr. Michael Young is a consolidator. Am I correct? That's correct, Your Honor. Yes, Mr. Chairman. And being a consolidator of all these uh, uh, containers no, na dumarating, nakakapagpalusot sila eh. 
Dahil nga, walang individual manifestation ang lahat ng mga kargong yun. Consolidated na siya. And I, I, I try to have a research about this, Mr. Chairman. I found out that yung consolidation ng mga, mga consignee, ng mga containers, meron silang isang manifestation lang. Kaya hindi mo alam, iba't ibang mga containers yun, iba't ibang cargo yun, pero kinonsolidate nila, kaya doon na nakakapasok yung mga palusot na sinasabi nila. Uh, Mr. Jimmy Guban, can you kindly correct me if I'm, ano, correct me, ano, kung mali ako. And after which, no, na malaman yung ibang mga cargo doon ay walang individual manifestation, yun ngayon na nakakalusot na dinadala from vessel to the warehouse. Am I correct? Yes, Your Honor, after uh, filing of entries. And doon nagkakaroon ng tinatawag na connivance ang warehouse owner and the warehouse inspector. That's correct, Your Honor. And then, after which, kapag meron ng connivance at, uh, at uh, ayaw magbigay, so stay ka dyan sa warehouse. Is this correct? That's correct, Your Honor. And after which, na magkaroon ng ayusan, saka lang makakalabas yung mga container na yun. Yes, Your Honor. And then, maglalagay sila ng mga different kind of scheme like footnote, uh, yung tinatawag na foreign to foreign na uh, Um, ang tawag doon, uh, foreign to foreign uh, transship, transshipment scheme. International transshipment, Your Honor. Yes, and yung tinatawag natin, pass break. Yes, Your Honor. Diba? I think, Mr. Chairman, ito ay isa sa mga problema that we need to correct in custom because we found out that yung manifestation, no? yung advanced manifestation na nanggagaling doon sa ship owner, yun, kaya natin i-check. But ang problem, kapag nag-consolidate na sila ng kanilang mga tinatawag na mga container doon na tayo napapalusutan. Doon na nalalagay itong mga droga. Kaya nga, consolidator si Michael Yang eh. Doon niya nagawa. Doon niya naitago. Doon niya nailabas. With that, Mr. Chairman, I, uh, I think maraming dapat ayusin sa custom. Specifically itong uh, uh, consolidation of the uh, consignee containers. Kaya, for the meantime, Mr. Chairman, yun lang muna po ang itatanong ko. And um, uh, I think um, uh, I'd be asking na lang po mamaya afterwards. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chair, uh, Chair, parliamentary inquiry, Mr. Chair. Parliamentary inquiry. Congressman uh, Adjong. Yes. Mr. Chair, yes, uh, just want to inquire if we are going to shift to another topic. Yes, we will. Uh, there are two more names okay. listed as uh, interpolators on the topic of dr uh, okay, dangerous illegal drugs. drugs. Then after... After this, we will now shift to the EJK. Okay. okay. Because I also have a, I also have questions, but because in the, with the interest of time, I will no longer be availing of that. And then I will just ask my question in the next hearing, particularly the illegal drug. Yes, Your okay. Honors, we still Thank have you. several committee hearings of the Quad that we will I was wondering, Mr. I was wondering, Mr. J, if you can list me as the first interpolator next hearing on we illegal will, drugs. We will do that. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Please take note. So the next, uh, the second to the last interpolator is uh, Congressman Rog Gutierrez, and then uh, Congressman uh, Carabs Paduano, and then last but not the least is Congressman Akop that will uh, recap the discussion of the topic today on the dangerous drug. So Congressman uh, Rog Gutierrez, you are recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair, uh, just a few questions, and actually this could have been an interjection, just to clarify po, no? But I'd like to direct our questions to our guest, Ms. Uh, Rose Nonolin. Good evening po. Uh, so, Mr. Chair, if all is well, I'll proceed with my questioning. Uh, Ms. Lin, good evening. Uh, Mr. Chair, just to clarify po, no? Because I know you've been answering this uh, previously already quite a lot, although I'd just like to clarify. Um, to give context, uh, your name was mentioned in the previously presented matrix, and uh, it raises a lot of questions. Of course, that's a uh, reason why we have this hearing to really clarify, po kung, especially to hear your side on this matters. Um, my understanding, uh, Mr. Chair, is that uh, Ms. Lynn Orelgo was already asked about the pharma, formally biological, no relation to formally pharmaceutical. Yes. However, is it correct to state that when you mentioned earlier that formally biological, Um, what was the nature, uh, just to clarify again, ano po yung nature ng uh, Farmerly Biological Corporation? Ang nature po sana nun na magiging business nun ay magtatayo po ng laboratory sa paggawa ng gamot. And this is not no longer functioning? No po. You mentioned earlier that, uh, I think one of the congressmen mentioned that uh, there were links between Farmerly Biological to Farmerly Philippines Holdings. You mentioned na 
wala pong link. Were you, were you able to verify kung may link po? Link po. Sorry, Mr. Chair. Pakiulit po ng tanong. Um, oh, sorry. Uh, were you able to verify? Because earlier you answered the in the negative when you were asked po if there was any link between Farmerly Biological, in which you are a uh, incorporator po, no? And Farmerly Philippines Holdings. Mr. Chair, wala pong Farmerly Philippines Holdings. Holdings po, wala po. Um, Mr. Chair, maybe ask the secretary to flash the first slide that we asked to be prepared. Um, Secretariat? Based on the corporate records, and you admitted this earlier, that you are a treasurer po, no? for Farmerly Biological. I am, I'm not sure if it's clear in your screen, po, but if you would see in the sixth listed under the GIS, General Information Sheet for Farmerly Biological, meron pong nakasulat na Farmerly Philippine Holdings. Would Mr. You... Mr. Chair, wala po talagang Farmerly uh, Holdings. But this is an official record that you've submitted before the SEC. No, wala po. How do we verify? Mr. Chair, I suppose uh, may we perhaps invite um, uh, a representative from the SEC so that we can confirm this finally, but just to share with the research person, uh, nandito po siya. And actually, can we move to the next slide, please? As we mentioned earlier, based on the articles of incorporation, you were designated as treasurer for, for Farmly Biological. That's true, Paul, And with, with that, you've executed this treasurer's affidavit. That's true, Paul. And in the treasurer's affidavit, basically, this is proof that you have accounted for at least the, the old ruling that you need to have 25% of the stock um, to be subscribed to and then 25% that we paid. That would necessarily mean, Paul, that you are aware of your stockholders. I will check what's the records po niya, Mr. Chair. Okay, but just to clarify, this is an official record. And we have the next slide, please. And yun po, lumalabas dun, based on Article 8, that there was, in fact, a Farmerly Philippine Holdings. In fact, it is your majority shareholder with 10.3 million amount subscribed. And if we look at the other shareholders, and this is the initial po sa Articles of Incorporation po natin, lahat po nominal shares lang po. Are you sure you don't recall this corporation? This was there from the very beginning. No, Mr. Chair. I'll double check po sa company okay. papers po namin. So, Mr. Chair, if that's the case, in your recollection, and to note po, no, it's interesting because it's Farmerly Philippines Holdings, but it is a Singaporean corporation based on the records. Mr. Chair, sa pagkaalala ko po, wala pong Philippine, uh, a Farmerly Philippine po. So maybe we know from your recollection how did you come um, how did you come into incorporating Farmerly Biological Corporation? Ang alam ko lang po sa Farmerly Biological lahat po ng incorporator po yan walang company lahat po tao. Lahat po tao. Yes po. Okay. And uh, the majority of the resources for the that was put up for the stock holdings would be from which who was Individual the largest po. stockholder? Individual. I mean, yeah, yung po? Singaporean po. Na si Mr. Wang. Ah, so there was a Singaporean involved? Yes po, who... Singaporean. Actually po, yan po ang naging locking, locking director po doon sa Farmally, Pharmaceutical. Ah, so you have an interlocking director? Yes po. Itong Singaporean national. Yes, but po. as of the incorporation of Farmally Biological, siya rin po, he was already there? Yes po. Siguro po, Mr. Chair, we, we, we really will need the SEC to confirm this po based on the documents that were provided. But uh, anyway, thank you for that clarification. We'll move on to the next. Um, as mentioned and has been established, you seem to be a pr very uh, prolific entrepreneur, po, no? You have a seri uh, series of corporations you've included that you have uh, incorporated, and you mentioned that not all of them were active. Yes. But uh, I'm sure that you're well aware that uh, quite a few of the corporations were mentioned in that matrix that was presented prior. And that's what actually sparked this. We just want to go through them po, to have an understanding. I know some of them were mentioned earlier, but uh, just to go through them one by one, para we have a clarification. Yung sa XRL Holdings po, this you mentioned was a family corporation, tama po ba? That's right po, Mr. And Chair. its primary purpose is to hold holdings in what industry? Or is this supposed to hold all of your investments? Yeah, that's true po. Yung okay. XRL po, this is 60% owned by you? Yes. And the 40% is owned by the husband? Yes po. And XRL has holdings in what subsidiaries po currently? Uh, sa ngayon po, wala pa. Kasi inaayos pa po namin yan. 
So XRL came after the other corporations. So you're going to be retrofitting na lang yes, po yung po. others. Oh, okay, oh. understood. Aayusin na lang po para okay. maayos yung setup. We also mentioned that there was a strong way technologies. Ito po ba is in the field of uh, Philippine offshore gaming? Is that Yes correct? po, before. Opo. Prior, it is not closed down. You have not liquidated yet, but you are no longer operating as there is no more or there is no license. Is that correct? No po, closed na po siya since 2023 pa. Uh, as in wrapped up na rin po yung yes. corporate papers and you've already liquidated. As a corporate papers po, Mr. Chair, inaayos na po yun. Okay, Pero so pagkakalap hindi po. ko, wala na siyang operations, wala na lahat. Okay po. Just to clarify po, kasi there's a difference between operation ceasing and the ceasing of the corporate life po. No? So, tuloy pa rin po yung corporate life. Wala lang operation. Yes po. Okay. That's right po. Thank you. And that correct po, 30% po kayo. Yes po. And you were in the back end. Yes. Until and 2021. Sino po yung front end operator? Was it your husband? Uh, ang operator, yes po. So husband nyo po is involved with uh, Pogo? Operations. Opo. So he knows the ins and outs of Philippine offshore gaming operations? Uh, yes po. Yes, he does. Do you know anything about the operations of Philippine offshore gaming operations? Or mostly doon ka lang po talaga sa permitting? Doon lang po talaga ako sa mga documents and permits po. Okay, so we'll go back to that later. Um, Ms. Lynn, nabagit rin po yung Paili Estate and Paili Holdings. And you've confirmed that you have a part in this po, no? In fact, for Paili Estate, you have 25% stake. Um, may we know po what is the nature of the Paili Estate uh, company? Mr. Chair, yung Piley. Piley. Ang Piley Holdings po, ito po ay holdings lamang. Uh, sorry, just to clarify po, Piley Estate. Uh, Piley Estate, yes, sorry. Po. Ang Piley Estate po, ito po yung may mga uh, formerly known po as pa... Naka-on po. Uh, sorry. Sorry. Mr. Chair, yung Piley Estate po, formerly known po siya as Piley Holdings. Oh, so they're one and the same? No But po. Formerly known po siya as uh, Piley Holdings. Yes po. Ito po ay holding companies po siya. Sorry, can you clarify? You mentioned that they formerly known as Piley Holdings. Yes po. But when I said they're one and the same, you said they're not. No po. So, Kasi mayroon po talaga siyang Piley uh, Estate. Formerly known as, so that means may dalawa pa po or isa lang po? Actually po, ang Piley Estate Group of Corporation, formerly known po siya as Piley Holdings. Okay, and the second corporation would be? Piley Holdings Corporation. Ah, uh, okay, so the group of company would be known as Holdings and the isa estate naman. Yes okay. po, yes So po. in any which case, both are now holdings, is that Both are now? holding companies. Both are holding companies. And yes. ito po yung nabanggit earlier na mentioned sa Clark Mega, Pro Mega Projects yes po. po. Okay, thank you. And, um, but you have a personal stake here po, no? 25%, tama po ba? Okay, thank you. Um, another corporation we'd like to go for, um, yung Full Win Gaming Corporation. Is this familiar to you, Ms. Lin? Sorry, Mr. Uh, Chair. Full Win? Full Win. Apo. And it's correct that you have 30% stake in this? Let me check po, Mr. Chair. Ha? Yes, Mr. Chair. And may we know the nature of the Full Win Gaming Corporation? Uh, Mr. Chair, itong full win is non-operating companies po to since 2021 pa. And ano po yung operations niya prior to this no, season? No, wala po siyang operation talaga. Uh, no operation at no, all? No what operation was, at all. What was the intended uh, industry po na papasokan po nila? Uh, dapat po ito yung full win, eh, gagawin po ito dapat na holdings din po, holdings company. Ito dapat yung una. Okay, the first holdings company. Yes po. Understood. Okay, and of course we have pharmaceutical, biological, which you've already explained. As treasure, uh, gagawa po sana ng factory for yes, medical po. supplies. And then of course we have yung Golden 999. This is a real estate company, tama po ba? Golden Sun 999 po. It's a ano po? A warehouse. Warehouse. Nah. Okay po. And you have a personal stake of 15%. Yes po. Apo. So amongst these corporations, would you say the bulk of your income comes from the mentioned corporations, or and there, kasi um, 
you and your husband seem to be very fond of holding corporations po, no? So usually that means corporation po ito, may pagmamayari ng iba't iba pang mga corporation. But at the end of the day, all of the financials would stem going upwards po, no? They funnel into these holdings corporations. Tama po ba? We find, sorry, no, Mr. Chen? Yung, uh, any profit, any revenue that the subsidiaries make, in order for it to reach the uh, intended, or the end user, the stockholder, dumadaan po ito sa holdings corporation. Union supposed to be. Supposed yes, to. union po yung plano. That's na plan. dapat sa holdings po dadaan. Yes. Kaya may holdings company. Okay. So from the one, two, three, four, five, six mentioned corporations, would you say the bulk of your net worth, the bulk of your income comes from this? Or my corporations pa not mentioned in which you would credit most of your net worth po? Actually, Mr. Chair, may mga corporations pa po kami. And given these corporations, how much percent would you say from your net worth itong... itong Anim. Ballpark figure lang po siguro. Hindi ko masasabi more or less, Mr. Chair. Eh. You won't be able to tell if it's at least half of your net worth? Three-fourths? Hindi ko masasabi, Mr. Chair. And how many more corporations outside of these holdings companies would you say that you still have? Yung, yung operating na lang po, para we have an idea of the uh, revenue structure that you have. Siguro may dalawa o tatlo pa, Mr. Chair. Two or three specific corporations or holdings rin po sila? Hindi po. Ah, specific naman? Yes po. And uh, we don't have to clarify po, no? but just for an idea, ano po yung industry nitong two or three? Yung tatlo? Yes, the Real industry. estate po. So mostly real estate? Na yes po. po. Okay. But we, you have an idea out of the two or three versus the six that were mentioned, wala po tayong idea, although you mentioned you're on more on the back end, you're... Who, who does your finances then po, ma'am? Um, mayroon po kami, tax lawyer. The tax lawyer. So yes, as long po. as your only concern is pumapasok lang naman yung pera, you yes, don't really po. need to know which side yes, po. Which is understandable po, no? Kasi as a businesswoman, sa rami-daming korporasyon, it's understandable. There are multiple streams of income. You might not necessarily be involved po with the specific. So that's perfectly understandable. But I ask this, Mr. Chair, because um, out of those mentioned, and I think this is just a repetition of what was mentioned earlier, um, yung Sean Wei, uh, it was a Pogo operator. You also have the Pile Estate, which was linked to DCLA, Yangtze, and yung sa Cagayan de Oro, which was uh, mentioned by Colonel Asierto. And of course, yung Golden Sun, which has been linked allegedly to the Shabu raid in Mexico, Pampanga. Uh, these are just some of the red flags that actually caused the, their inclusion in the matrix. So you just wanted to know, but uh, our research person has repeatedly posited that she's only in the back end, and therefore she would not know the front, which is we're perfectly understandable. We just want to get that out in the open. No, no. So with that, Mr. Chair, I think, um, although we don't have the names specifically yet, we might have to ask for the actual members who are familiar with the operations. Perhaps we would like to invite them po, no, in our next hearing so that we can really clarify their links to the matrix. Moving forward, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, moving forward, po, no, siguro. Um, one interesting that was mentioned in the matrix po is in Seanway Technologies. And you mentioned po earlier that you were involved with the back end and the permitting. And this would involve permitting po sa PAGCOR, would that be correct, Mr. Chair? Yes, that's right and po. Please correct me if I'm wrong, we might be mistaken, but our understanding is when you have a parang master permit, master license for POGO operations, it, if there are service providers, they piggyback on your license. Is that correct? Yes po. At mayroon din po silang sariling license na ini-issue yes. po ng PAGCOR. Like for example po, I have this copy na para po ang license na ito ay sa master license po namin, which is Sean Way. And mayroon din pong license dahil mag apply rin po ang mga service provider po namin sa PAGCOR. Absolutely. So they have their own license then, Pog. Yes, they have their own license, but of course, they have to be attached to a Pogo yes, operator. Yes, Pog. So in which case, the master license would be Sean Way Technologies. And there were some that I'm sure you're aware of them. They were mentioned in particular. Do you have any relation to Turquoise Diamond Technology? Ano po siya? Um, service provider po siya ng master license po namin. But I mean, do you have any personal relation? Do you have a no, stock po. holding? Or do you have interlocking directors in some of your corporations? I'm not sure, but I'll check po para hindi po ako magkamali, Mr. Chair, kung okay lang. 
si Miss Amy Nono Klokigan is a relative of yours. Yes, Mr. Chair. And are you aware that she is a stockholder of Turquoise Diamond Technology? I'll check po, Mr. Sige Chair, the documents. Okay, we, we will probably request po siguro from the SEC some of these documents just to show po na that there is a relation with Turquoise Diamond Technology. Um, yung Oro One po that was mentioned earlier, this was a service provider. Are you all familiar with Oro One Inc.? I'm not familiar po, kasi service provider lang po sila namin. Okay po. And uh, Shidai Keji, are you familiar with the service provider? Shidai Keji is one of our uh, service provider. Apa. Ms. Uh, Lin, the uh, three honorable chairman, of course, Do you are you familiar with a John Stephen Locara? I'm sorry po? Are you familiar with a John Stephen Locara? Alam ko po, isa siya sa... Incorporators. Do you have a personal relationship with Mr. Mm -hmm. John Stephen Locara? No, Mr. Chair. None. Although the, this is a fellow incorporator in Torquoise and Brickhart. Uh, speaking of, I, for I um, lapses, are you aware with Brickhart's technologies, po ba? I'm sorry? Brickhart Technologies. Isa po sa service provider. On the service but, providers. Yes. And do you have any relation with any of the incorporators? I think Robic Al. I'm not sure po kung sino sa mga pamangkin ko ang nandiyan. Uh, so if you I'm have a relative mistaken, from? If I'm not mistaken po. Okay, thank you. Um, this bears noting lang po, no? Because amongst those mentioned, yung Torcos Diamond Technology, Oro One, and Shitai Keji, were service providers that were located in the Baofu compound, which is more notoriously known to be linked to uh, Mayor Alice Guo. So this is one more thing why it was mentioned, the matrix. So we wanted to clarify po any relationship that you might have. Lastly, uh, Mr. Chair, just wanted to ask if you know a certain Jason Uson. Jason Uson is one of the incorporators sa mga companies po. In which companies po ba? Nandun po siya sa Pile, nandun po siya sa Fullwin, and nandun rin po siya sa, pa, sa holdings po. Yung XLR? Hindi po. Which holdings po? Uh, Pile holdings, holdings at saka Pile Estate. And Estate. Yes po. In fact, he is the president of Piley Holdings or Estate Puba. I'm not sorry po. Ah. Hindi ko lang matandaan kung siya po ba sa Piley Estate or sa Piley Holdings. But uh, we confirm that he is a president. Ah, uh, I'm not sure po. I'll check po. Okay, Para hindi ako magkamali, Mr. Chair. Pasensya po. Do you have a personal relationship? Um, as mentioned earlier, as a businesswoman, usually you would try to get to know the people that you would be getting in business with. And it seems to be see, Mr. Jason Uson is one such person that you have business on a regular basis. Um, so would you say, you know, how long have you known Mr. Jason Uson? I knew him around 20, if I'm not mistaken, 2016. 2016. And um, since then, you've been business partners? Yes, po. Is he someone knowledgeable in the operations in these uh, the same operations? The same lang po siya sa akin. Nasa back office po kami. Oh, back office po. Yes po. Because I'm sure you've seen the matrix and there seems to be a comparison that Mr. Jason Uson um, allegedly would be your counterpart if there is Ms. Rose Nonolin for the 40 per, 60 60% understandably of your husband. We have Mr. Jason Uson who holds 60% on behalf of the Michael Yang companies. Would you know anything to that extent? I'm not sure po, Mr. Okay. Chair. But you mentioned that you've met Michael Yang previously and you're aware of who he is. I met Michael Yang year 2013. 2013 po. Yes po. And just for the record po, Mr. Chair, so Mr. Jason Uson is also a incorporator for Yangtze and DCLA, which is a company that was mentioned to have problems related to the drug trade. Um, thank you very much, Ms. Uh, Lin. Just to thank clarify you, lang you, po Mr. yung mga corporation that. Mr. Chair, I hope that we will be able